you know, as a blind film critic, I'm pretty much up for anything. So, uh, when I started rewatching some films that had some sequels this year, and I noticed that uh, John Wick was on Peacock, I was like, oh, I'll do that one. I'll do that series also. That's, that'd be fun. It's three movies. I can get that knocked out before four hit streaming. Then I realized that Peacock didn't put audio description on John Wick franchise, which is the most absolutely bonkers shit ever. So this is my second look at John Wick, but without audio description. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's really hilarious. It's it's hilarious how how stupid this whole situation is with audio description and these streaming services that they would that they would put a film like this out there without accessibility. This is one of the least accessible films. Although, I will say that when I watch films like this, <laughs> I really start to appreciate the, the, the sound team. You know, the sound design, the sound mixing, the Dolby, the ADR, <laughs> just all of that. I, I just go, wow, this movie sounds really good. I have no idea what's going on, but these are some really good effects and sounds, and uh, somebody did a really good job with the, with this track. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's you know it's offensive, but if you've ever tried to talk to Peacock, you realize that uh, that they they have decided to forego. Uh, any sort of human feedback and you talk to chatbots. So trying to explain to a chatbot what audio, why you need audio description is not fun for me. <laughs> um, it's a great way to throw a middle finger up and be like, hey, what's up? Yeah, fuck you guys. <laughs> we don't really like our customers. Uh, and that's what Peacock does. You're just like, fuck you, here's a chatbot. <laughs> um... So, yeah, I don't, I don't know that I'm going to be able to convince a chatbot to put on their description on John Wick, but as it's not there, uh, I can tell you that, and it did not happen. John Wick was released at a time when I, I could still see it was before my blindness. So I've seen this film. I, the comparison is just wildly different. Just, oh, Jesus. Holy Jesus. The spirit has moved through me. I mean, we're on. I can't help but laugh because it's so fucking stupid. It's so ridiculous. I hope, I hope, please don't. If you're blind, please don't watch this without audio description. It's ridiculous. You guys have no idea what's going on. Um, it, it, they speak... Uh, no, the the like it's it's all fight scenes. It's the movie is predominantly fight scenes. Although I will say that, uh, thankfully, in the first film they have a significant amount of dialogue because they're still establishing the universe, and this franchise gets progressively less and less dialogue as the franchise moves along. I heard something like Keanu Reeves says like two hundred and fifty words or something like that throughout the entirety of the two hour and forty five minute <laughs> fourth film. Um, which makes sense. He's a very strong, silent type. Uh, there's a moment in this where he gets a phone call and he doesn't say anything. <laughs> and, like, the guy knows. He's like, oh, damn. 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 He's not talking. <laughs> like, uh, the whole premise is that, that John Wick is this retired, super deadly assassin. And some uh, dumbasses break into his house and steal his car and, and kill his dog. But they leave him alive. They don't kill him. They just think it's funny to kill his dog. But he had just gotten his dog, and that was one of the things about the rewatch that I found was, I actually like, in my mind, I think I crafted, like, an alternate version of John Wick where that dog and John had a little bit more bonding time than they actually do have in the film, and that's why it made more sense to me. Um, that dog is not in the film very long, but it's the most important dog, I think, in all of cinema. That dog's death in all of cinema is literally a catalyst for four films. I don't think any other dog can say that. I, if you can find a dog, please put it in the comments, because I don't think there's a single 
fucking dog that is responsible for four films. Whose death is responsible for four films. I mean, like, I'm not going to say, you know, everybody's going to bring up, well, Old Yeller's death is pretty iconic. Old Yeller was one film. There wasn't, like, an Old Yeller 2, an Old Yeller 3, and an Old Yeller 4. <laughs> Where, like, the dog wasn't even in it, but they kept going. <laughs> they just kept telling the story. <laughs> Uh, and that's what they do with John Wick, is, is they're still making John Wick movies. Uh, they're doing spinoffs now, too. <laughs> so, this is the most important dog in all of cinema. I just want you to know that. This is the most important dog death in all of cinema, is in John Wick. Um, it's it's uh, like Helen of Troy, the, the, <laughs> the face that launched a thousand ships. This is the dog that launched a thousand movies. Um, even the movies that are not John Wick, that are just heavily influenced to, like, nobody starring Bob Odenkirk, you know? I mean, there are films that come along afterwards that they're like, hmm, that other film did this really well, really successfully. How do we do something like it and do it really successfully? <laughs> so... Uh, but this is at this is utter nonsense. It's just like listening to like things breaking and and punching and and scraping and just gunfire, uh, uh, um, concrete breaking. There's a moment where he's like breaking through concrete, and I literally couldn't remember why. But that was one of the moments in the film too. See, I don't remember like every frame of every film. Like, well, some. I think I do of some films. <laughs> I think Jurassic Park I do. <laughs> but other than Jurassic Park, I don't really remember every frame of every film. And uh, I was like, why is he breaking through concrete? Fuck, I need audio description. <laughs> so even in my rewatch, there were, there were parts where I was like, damn it. <laughs> there, I need audio description for this. But there were moments that I remembered and there were moments, you know... Obviously, the Continental came back to me. Uh, rest in peace, Lance Reddick. Uh, and uh, this one's got a solid supporting cast. So, um, yeah, we got uh, Willem Dafoe that pops up. Uh, we got Mr. Deadwood himself <laughs> stumbles into the film. Uh, Ian McShane, in case you didn't get the Deadwood reference, he's, he's in this. So, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's a great film. It's a great action film. Uh, I would love to have heard this with audio description, but I also think it's funny to talk about the fact that Peacock thinks blind people can watch this. I, I really want to get to a point in life where I can find people who work for these companies and be like, I want you to watch this with your eyes blindfold yourself. And tell me, do you think this is a good experience? Do you think this is acceptable? Do you believe that this, if this is how you could watch movies for the rest of your life, would you? Because the answer would be no. Nobody would say yes to that question. Nobody would listen to a film like, like John Wick. Unless they're just really into, like, Dolby. <laughs> just, oh, I love, I love trying to figure out how they made that sound. You know, I love how trying to figure <laughs> unless they <laughs> unless they're really into that, then um I, I just I don't understand how they could possibly uh possibly believe that this is that this is how people should watch films. It's uh this this is it's not quite as bad as Skinamarink, which is completely unintelligible. There are scenes with dialogue. So I can't say, you know, that you'll spend the entire film listening to just nonsense, because that's skin and rink. Uh, but I can tell you that the <laughs> large scenes of this film are just sound effects. Uh, just cars revving, uh, nobody's talking, they're all just getting really serious, getting ready to fight. This is not one of those like, films where people, like, joke around, well, like, it's in Deadpool, you know, <laughs> nobody's, nobody's joking, this is very serious, people, when they're, when they're fighting, they get down to business, it's, they're, they are in it, laser focused, 
these are like the top assassins. Um, I have to think what it would be like to live in the world of John Wick and like what our news bulletins would be like all the time. <laughs> like, would we, would we even know? Like, or or do they somehow manage to keep this entire world off the grid from the people who live in it? <sighs> anyway, uh, so yeah, don't watch this. Um, if you have a version of John Wick with audio description, which I'm sure it exists, uh, like VOD or DVD or something, then watch that. Um, I actually do have it on DVD. I just chose streaming service because it made more sense at the time. And it allowed me this ridiculous representation of the film so I can officially tell Peacock, go fuck yourself. <laughs> like, I can officially just say, hello, Peacock. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> um, yeah, we gotta... And it's not like it's something... I didn't have to go, like, hide and find it on their thing. It was suggested to me because of the popularity of John Wick 4 right now in theaters. The John Wick collection was one of the, like, the featured items. They were like, please watch this! Please! <laughs> Either watch this or Vanderpump Rules! And I was like, well, I'm not watching Vanderpump Rules, so I guess I'm watching John Wick. Um, <laughs> if you're going to make it like a, like a cornerstone of your current media, of your advertising, eh, <laughs> consider making it, I don't know, accessible to <laughs> Or, or at least bringing the already existing accessibility along with it, I, I, I would think that's that would be where I would be anyway. I mean, call me crazy, but, um, you know, I just think it's silly to leave films without accessibility out there, especially films like John Wick. But this has been fun. This has been illuminating, illumination, <laughs> which is a universal property, which is Peacock. So, um, here's some illumination for Universal. John Wick is unwatchable. Uh, sadly, without audio description. If, uh, if it had had audio description, I think the first time I gave it, like, an A-, minus first time I watched it, so... I did have, it, you know, from, like, things that I could remember, I, I didn't really have a problem with it the second time around. I wasn't like, ugh, this film is awful. <laughs> like, I didn't hate myself for liking it the first time around. I just thought it was nonsensical that, that this film existed in the world without audio description. It's not very long. It's, uh, like, an hour and 40 or something like that. So it's it's pretty easy. It's, like, the shortest of the franchise, by the way. <laughs> like, each film gets progressively longer. I don't know that I'm going to watch more than the first one without audio description, but it gives me an opportunity to talk about, like, the conceptually what a John Wick film is like without audio description, which is basically just... Bang, 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 bang. You know, it's just... It's, uh... It's, like, a lot of sound. Uh... It's kind of like watching RR, basically. Um, except I was able to understand the dialogue here. So, uh, yeah. Anyway. <sighs> Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Please keep subscribing so I can keep talking about audio description. I would love to live in a world where I don't have to worry about, does this have audio description? Did it follow to this streaming service? I don't know how we get there, but I'm, I'm trying to get there. And I, I know having a social media presence nowadays is how you get anything done. You know, you call somebody and you go, I've got 500,000 followers. And they're like, oh my God, we have to get, <laughs> we have to listen to this guy. <laughs> um, so, but if you call somebody and you go, I have 118 followers. They go, whatever, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> So do I. <laughs> uh, but so if you could click that subscribe button, that'd be great. I also have a website, MacTheMovieGuy.com. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter or Instagram at MacTheMovieGuy. You can go to the audio description project, adp.acb.org, 
which will let you know where you can watch John Wick with audio description or, or the sequels, because it does exist. Um, I just <laughs> wanted to prove a point. <laughs> and uh, you can go to theadna.org and uh, you can look up, I don't know, John Wick and see who's narrating it. I, should you choose to watch it somewhere and you're like mm, I was thinking about watching John Wick but I want to make sure that my favorite narrator is on the, on the job I, if they're not then I just I don't know if I have it in me um, but if you yeah, and so it's there that's what that's it that's that's what it does that's what that site does let you know who's narrating films and television series anyway that's it um, y'all have a good day I'm gonna review something else for you and uh, maybe it'll have audio description. I don't know. I live a crazy life on the edge. <laughs> and I will see you guys on the other side. <laughs>